already found. So we have been studying about God's will, how to seek God's will, how to know God's will, how to discern what is God's will and what isn't God's will. Last week, we went over, first and foremost, God's will for us is to repent and put our faith in Jesus Christ for salvation. This is where it all starts. That we come into a personal relationship with Christ. That we begin to walk with Him daily. We learn that our heart attitude should be, Not my will be done, Lord, but your will be done. Right? We're not seeking after God for what? For selfish ambitions. But we've been given that new heart. And we want to walk in newness of life. And we want to live for His glory, for His will. And, and we learn that, that we need to understand that God's will sometimes will, will be difficult. That it's not just about us. We learn that God's will will always lead us into a holy life. God's will will always bring Him glory. So if we're, think, if we're thinking that we're walking in God's will, but, but what we're doing doesn't give God glory, what we're doing doesn't lead us to a holy life, then we can understand and we can know for certain that, that that's not God's will. So before we go any further, let's go ahead and just start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we seek your will, just give us the wisdom, Lord, and and help us to see your will for our life. Help us to remember that, that you, you work in your timing. That we need to have faith. We need to be patient. We need to trust you. And we need to do diligently from our hearts your will. And Lord, as we wait, we need to do those things we know we ought to do. We need to be in prayer. We need to be in your word. We need to be sharing the gospel with those around us. We need to be shining a light in this dark world, Lord. And Lord, we praise you that you have a will and a calling for each of our lives. But give us humility that we would submit to you. Give us the strength we need, Lord, to pick up that cross and follow where you lead. We need courage, Lord. We need your strength. For your word says, not by power, not by strength of self, but by your spirit, Lord. We just thank you for this day. Be with us through this study. Open our minds to your word. Open our hearts, Lord, and plant your truth within us and help us to live by it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so last week we also went over things like Worldly sorrow and godly sorrow. So just real quick, worldly sorrow is where we only feel sorry because there's a consequence to sin. But you see, godly sorrow will always lead to repentance. Godly sorrow comes through the Holy Spirit who convicts our hearts of sin. And it leads us toward God. But worldly sorrow doesn't lead to repentance. It doesn't lead to to Christ, it just leads to us feeling sorry for ourselves. It leads for us trying to, we only call upon God because we want Him to get us out of the situation, but we don't call upon God in repentance of sin. And faith and repentance <clears throat> can't be separated. Because see, you can't, you can't turn to God in faith without turning away from sin, right? Repentance. So as we're in this study, let's keep that heart attitude, right? Not my will, Lord, but your will be done. Give me the wisdom to understand, to see. Give me the strength to walk in your will for my life. I want to bring you glory, Lord. I want to do your will from my heart. Lord, and I understand that it might not be exactly what I want when I want it, but I trust you. I'm going to wait on you. And I'm going to do what I know I need to do right now. Right? So we're taking steps towards God's will right now. Um, as the saying I've heard many times, and you've probably heard me say it, you'll never be tomorrow what you're not becoming today. So first and foremost, God's will is that people would repent of their sin 
and come into a personal relationship with Him. That's first. Now today what I want to address is where we get into God's Word, and we may mean well, but we take things out of context. Right? We're not rightfully dividing the Word, and, and we see this a lot. And, and I want to bring this one verse to attention, Jeremiah 29, 11. The Lord says, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And you know it can be easy, right, for us to read that, take it out of context, misinterpret it, and say, okay, this means that God wants to give me everything that I want, right when I want it. And see, what is our heart toward God? That's what we need to examine. What is my heart toward God? Am I seeking God? Am I just taking parts of God's Word and interpreting it how I want it to read? We've got to remember, this was to the Israelites who were exiled. Yes, it is true God has a plan for our life. It is true that God wants to prosper us. But it's not true that God wants to give you every selfish desire of your heart. Does that make sense? It's not true that God will give you things that lead you into worldly living. That God's going to bless you with things that, that, that drive you away from Him. Right? So first and foremost, that's why I'm saying our heart's attitude, Lord, show me your will for my life. Lord, you died for me. With all my heart, I want to live for you. Lord, I don't deserve your mercy. I don't deserve your grace. Lord, show me. And the Lord promises us in Psalms. He says, I will instruct you. I will guide you with my loving eye upon you. But don't be like the mule. Don't be stubborn. So we just ask God, give me that humble heart. Help me to submit to your will and give me the wisdom to see your will. Okay, so we left off on number 10. And this question says, it's important that we let the Bible, try to fill this in for yourself, it's important that we let the Bible blank and we don't read into the Bible what we so think about that for, for a second. After what we just got done speaking about, how we can take a Bible verse and read into it what we, wanna, what we want it to say instead of letting God's Word speak to us, right? Instead of letting Scripture in, interpret Scripture, instead of reading verses in context, instead of asking the question, who is the original author and who is the original audience and what would he have been saying to them? What is the historical context of this verse? So it's right that it's so important, and as we seek God's will, that we rightfully divide His word, else, else we could get led astray into following after our own will instead of seeking God's will. So question 10, it's important that we let the Bible speak and we don't read into the Bible what we want, want it or wish it to say. Right? We don't, we don't run ahead of God, and we don't read into the Bible. We take God at His Word, and we let the Bible speak, and we are submissive to the truth of God's Word. And it's, Lord, with all my heart, I want to know the truth of Your Word. With all my heart, help me to rightfully divide Your Word. Because as we're going to get into in a little bit, we can't separate the will of God from God's Word. You can't separate the two. And how we rightfully divide and discern um, and how we, how we clearly see God's will is through the lens of God's word. God's will will never contradict the truth of his word. So that, that we must understand. All right, so question 11. Our heart is deceitfully wicked. wicked. God is the only one who is worthy to be praised and worshipped. The will of God is not for our hearts deceitfully wicked. So the will of God is not for our wicked pleasure, but for his good pleasure. This is important because why do you think the prosperity gospel has taken off so much? 
it appeals to man's fleshly desire. They say, the Lord will bless you. The Lord will prosper you. Yes, and He will, but again, God ain't going to give you those things that pull you into a sinful lifestyle. God ain't going to give you those things that get in the way of our personal relationship to Him. God is not going to cater to your wicked, selfish pleasure. His will is always done according to who He is, for His glory, and for our good. And sometimes that means discipline. Sometimes that means suffering. Sometimes that means waiting. Sometimes the answer is just no. God says, no, you're not ready. No, it ain't going to happen. Like a parent, right? Parents don't just give their kids whatever they want whenever they want, right? Because we understand, okay, so if I let my kid at 10 o'clock at night drink an energy drink, that's not good for him. And I love my kid, and I want to give my child what's best for them. I want to watch over them. I want to look after them. I don't want to see my child making the mistakes I've made. How much more so does our Heavenly Father watch over us? How much more so can he see what's around the corner, right? The parent has lived a longer life, and, and we know, okay, if my kid continues doing this, it's going to ruin their life. If my kid continues these sinful habits or these acts of rebellion, I know what it's going to lead to. You know, I've seen the, the subtle slide in my own life. So as parents who are wicked, who are evil, that's us. We look after our children, how much more does our Heavenly Father look after us? His will isn't ever going to cater to those fleshly, selfish desires. God's will will always be according to His Word, for His glory, and for our own good. Praise God for that. See, He's worth waiting on. He's worth trusting in. Right? He's going to reward us with what? Joy and peace. His very presence being the treasure of our hearts. So, the first step of knowing God's will is that we know God personally. Question 12. I want to drive that home because there's so many people who are seeking, seeking like what God can give instead of God himself. Right? What can God do for me instead of Look at what God has already done. Look at the cross. How could I not answer the call? How could I not put my faith in Him? How could I not turn from all this worldly stuff and surrender my life to Him? So we can't miss the first step or we're missing it altogether. If we have not come to that place of being broken over our sin, if we have not come to that place of repentance, if we have not seen the severity of our sin, then therefore we haven't seen the goodness of God and we don't know Him. A lot of people have a head knowledge of God, but they don't know God personally, and that's God's will. His will is that we know Him, that we come into a personal relationship with Him and we begin to walk with Him. All right, so I've, I've driven that point home enough. Let's read Romans 12, verse 2 together. It says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So question 12, we've established. So that's the first step to knowing God's will. We must know God personally. That's, that's the answer to question 12. And now that we've come into that personal relationship, God is saying, separate from the world. Do not be conformed any longer. Do not go after the things of the world. Do not think like the world. Do not act like the world. Do not talk like the world. Question 13, as believers, we are not to think like the world, act like the world, or talk like the world. It should be so evident. That we're a child of God and not a child of, of Satan. But sometimes, right? Sometimes we don't always act like it. That's true. We're not perfect. 
But there should be, without a doubt, that transformation, that new heart. Remember, the old has gone, the new has come. Are we walking in newness of life? Are we daily confessing and forsaking our sin, walking humbly with our God? Or are we sick? Right? Are, is our heart become sick? Is it being conformed to this world? Do we act like everyone else? Do we talk like everyone else? Do we think like everyone else? No, our minds need to be renewed. And how are they renewed? By God's word. We need to saturate our, our lives and our time into God's word, else we're never going to know his will. He's, he, he's going to prepare us first for his will. It's going to take time. We're going to have to have faith. We're going to have to be patient, and we're going to have to trust him. 1 John 2, 15 through 17 says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life come not from our Heavenly Father, but from the world. And the world is dying. Its desires will pass away, but the man, the person who does the will of God, lives forever. Yes, if we are doing the will of God, we are the children of God. That is true. But if we are doing the things of this world, we are either self-deceived or we really need to get ourselves right with God and we need to do it right now. We have got to quit acting like our sin isn't a big deal. We all fall into sin. Yes, and we all fall short. But there's a big difference between struggling with sin and practicing sin. Loving the world or struggling because we live in this world, right? There's a big difference. James 4.4 4 says, you adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred toward God? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy to God. You have to choose this day whom you're going to serve. That's why Jesus said, you're not worthy of me unless you pick up your cross daily. Daily. And follow me. We must not be conformed to the world, but to the likeness of Christ. Number 14. We must not be conformed to the world, but to the likeness of Christ. As it says in Romans 8.28. This is God's will for us. That we know him. That we walk with him. That we are conformed into the likeness of Christ. That he changes our heart. He sanctifies our heart. This is God's will for us. Number 15, there is, there is no shortcuts. There is no magical formula for renewing our minds. We must fill our minds with God's word and live according to God's word. This is number 15. There are no shortcuts. There is no magical formula for renewing our minds. We must fill our minds with God's word and live according to God's word. We live in the age of shortcuts. We want shortcuts. We want it now. We want an instant. And, and this is the world we live in. You know, you type it up on Google, it's instant. Our food is instant. Our pleasure is instant. We're not used to having to work hard. But it ain't like that everywhere in the world. There's a lot of... Places that look upon America and they just say you're spoiled, you're selfish, you're ungrateful, you're prideful, you're arrogant. I'm sure that's how God sees us too. Is that how we're living? Are we above waiting upon God? Are we above putting in effort? Do we think that we're entitled to something right now? Do we think that God sits up there and says, hey, tell me what you want and I'm going to give it right when you want it. You tell me what's best. No, that's not how it works. And so if we're seeking God's will, we can't have that attitude in our heart. We got to understand there's no shortcuts. If you want to grow in God's word, get into God's word. If you want to know God's will, get into God's word. Devote yourself to prayer. Start giving up the things of the world and start saying, Lord, I surrender myself to you and I make myself available. Are we making ourselves available or are we filling our time with the things of the world? We're not going to get it both ways and God ain't having it. God will be displeased if we spend all of our time not seeking him. 
Now, it's not saying, God isn't saying you can't ever have fun. You can't ever do things. But is there an imbalance, right? And we say, Lord, show me. Search me and know me. Show me any offensive way. And Lord, give me conviction. Give me humility that I would that I would confess those things. That I wouldn't be stubborn, but I would be humble and I would walk with you today. Lord, I, each day has enough trouble of its own. I'm not going to worry about tomorrow, but today I want to submit to your will. And if your will for me is to not know your will and to wait upon you, then that's your will for me and I'm going to give you thanks and I'm going to trust you. God's will, number 16, God's will will always be according to what do you think? God's word. This is so important. God's will will always be according to God's word. God's will will always lead us into holy living. God's will will always bring him glory. God's will will always be according to his good pleasure and it will not cater to our selfish ambitions. Remember, our heart attitude, your will be done, not my will. So as we're seeking to discern God's will, these things play such an important role. All right, so number 17. God's will simply means what God wants in the life of the believer. So if we're asking ourselves, what, do, what does God's will really mean? Well, it just simply means what He wants, what He desires, what our Heavenly Father desires from His children. What our Lord Jesus desires for the life of His followers. What the Holy Spirit is leading us into. What does God want in my life? This is what it means to, to seek God's will. It's to say, what does God want? What does God desire? So as, and so what we're doing is we're going to start breaking down Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And it says here, By the renewing of your mind, how does that come? That comes through God's word. Right? That comes through wholehearted devotion to Him. That comes through seeking Him in prayer. That comes from separating from the things of this world and making ourselves available to God, being saturated in His Word, being just drawing near to God. We need Him to renew our mind that we're no longer conformed to the world, but we're going to be transformed by the truth of His Word through the power of the Holy Spirit. And then it says in verse 2, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. What does it mean, His pleasing will? It's going to please us? We've already established, no. It doesn't mean that. But as God changes our heart and we walk in His will, it will become pleasing to us. But it doesn't mean at all that it's just something after our own heart. It's after God's own heart. So, pleasing. Okay, so actually, uh, on question 17, good means what is upright, honorable, and pleasing to God. This is question 17. What is upright, honorable, good, pleasing, acceptable to God? Pleasing. This doesn't mean that God's will is always going to be pleasing to us, right? But it will be pleasing to God. And perfect. This means no improvements can be made upon the will of God. So do you believe that today? Are you seeking His good, pleasing, <clears throat> and perfect will? Are you waiting upon Him? Are you making yourself available to Him? <clears throat> Is your heart attitude, not my will, Lord, but your will be done? So next week, we're going to pick up, and we're going to get into the first steps, right? 
Now that we put our faith in Christ, we're going to talk about the importance of devoting ourselves to prayer, getting into God's Word daily, picking up that cross. We're going to get into the importance of going before the Lord in faith and asking for wisdom. We're going to get into the, the what happens when we're foolish and selfish, what happens when we reject instruction. We're going to get into what the Bible says about seeking wise counsel, about going to those who are more mature in the Lord and seeking their advice, <clears throat> about putting God first. We're going to break down other verses too. We're going to break down verses that that say, this is God's will for your life. And we're going to go through those verses and we're going to look at God's sovereignty and we're just going to continue to seek God and His wisdom and seek Him with our whole heart. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank You for this study. Lord, and just press upon our hearts the importance of seeking Your will that it's your desire, Lord, that first we come to know you and we begin to walk with you. And Lord, that you do have a plan and a will and a purpose for every single person. No one is left out, Lord. No one is going to ever be told that you don't love them and that they're not included because that's your heart. Lord, we're such sinners. We're so undeserving. But Lord, because of your goodness, you want us to know you. You want us to walk in that will. And Lord, so as we seek your will through the truth of your word, help us to devote ourselves to prayer, to separate, not be conformed to the world, but be transformed. Lord, renew our minds and cleanse our hearts and help us just to seek you more and more each day that we would trust you and be patient and be willing to wait as you reveal your will. To your name be all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.